would like to call the uh, City Council meeting of July the 1st, 2014 to order. Sondra, would you please call the roll? Adams, Long. Here. Gray. Marsh. Here. Kenyon. Here. Hetty. Here. Pennant. Here. Schottmeyer. Here. Mayor Jordan. Here. Would you join me in signing the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Good evening, everyone. I would like to uh, start off by recognizing the uh, Young African Leaders Initiative from the University of Arkansas. If y'all would stand and be recognized, please. <laughs> Wonderful to have you here. I assure you we won't disappoint you tonight. <laughs> The uh, first order of business we have tonight is the consent. Uh, number one on is uh, approval of the June 17, 2014 City Council meeting minutes. Number two, City Council Workers' Compensation Insurance Support. A resolution to express the City Council's support of a legislation enactment to provide for workers' compensation insurance coverage for emergency responders for work-related mental injury or illness. Number three, bid number 14-29, Orstron Incorporated Resolution to award bid number 14-29 and authorize a contract with Orstron Incorporated in the amount of $1,242,968.30 for improvements to the Greenland Gravity Sewer Main to approve a cost share agreement with the City of Greenland in the amount of $374,806.67 to approve a project contingency of $125,000 and to approve a budget adjustment. I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as read. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the consent, consent agenda as read. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Long. Yes. Marsh. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Hetty. Yes. Tennant. Yes. Schottmeyer. Yes. Okay, on unfinished business, number one. Many of the articles of incorporation with the Walton Art Center Council and Foundation. An ordinance to approve the Fifth Amendment to the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Art Center Foundation Incorporated, the Sixth Amendment of the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Art Center Council Incorporated, and their amended bylaws and the amended and restated interlocal cooperation between the University of Arkansas and the City of Fedville. I will entertain a motion to go to second reading. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to go to the second reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Long. Yes. Marsh. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Hetty. Yes. Kenneth. Yes. Schottmark. Yes. And Adams is here now. Adams. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. An ordinance to approve the Fifth Amendment to the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Arts Center Foundation Incorporated, the Sixth Amendment to of the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Arts Center Council Incorporated, and their amended bylaws, and the amended and restated interlocal cooperation agreement between the University of Arkansas and the City of Fayetteville. Council, we have several people from the public that would like to address you tonight. If that's okay with you, I'd like to start with public comment. Certainly. Is that fine? Yes. Certainly. Okay. Mr. Lee, would you like to address us tonight? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmen and Administrators. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. My name is Greg Lee, and I have the honor of serving as uh, President Chairman of the Walton Art Center Board. First, I want to thank you all for your service to our community, and particularly your legacy of supporting the arch, arts, cultural activities, and specifically the Walton Art Center. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you in behalf of the overwhelming majority of the board of the Walton Art Center and its staff and to speak in favor of the governance proposal as presented to you for your consideration. The board of the Walton Arts Center ratified this same governance proposal by an overwhelming majority. It is and has always been the intent of our board and our staff to grow the quality, variety, and quantity of programming presented at the Walton Arts Center in Fayetteville. Since 1992, we have seen the Walton Arts Center grow to be a top-notch performing arts center 
with a scale and scope not normally seen in a city or region of our size. The Walt Art Center Board is grateful to the city of Fayetteville and the citizens of Fayetteville who have established a legacy of financial investment in and support for the Walton Art Center. The Walton Art Center is also very fortunate to have the legacy of substantial ongoing financial investment and support from donors and patrons outside of Fayetteville. It is this combination of support from Fayetteville and Northwest Arkansas that has made the original construction and the ongoing success of the Walton Art Center possible. The Walton Art Center has a significant need for ongoing fundraising. Ticket sales only provide an average of 50% of our annual revenue with the balance of our required funds coming from fundraising. Approximately 4% of our annual revenue comes from the City of Fayetteville, the State of Arkansas, and the U.S. government, each of them making contributions to specific programming, which is very important to us. The remaining 46% of our annual fundraising slash revenue comes from private citizens, our foundation, and corporate entities. Our annual revenue budget for this particular year of 14 was $9.5 million. So we have a substantial requirement each year to raise four plus million dollars for private donors just to operate on an annual basis. I say this to illustrate the Walton Art Center Board fully understand and appreciates its significant reliance upon the continued support of the City of Fayetteville, Fayetteville Citizens, the University of Arkansas, the Walton Family Foundation, our Northwest Arkansas donor and our Northwest Arkansas donor base to supplement our ticket revenue and provide funding for our programming, our facility maintenance, and our capital improvement program. Fayetteville has been our home for 22 plus years. The Fayetteville Performing Arts Center has been and will be, or as far as this board can see, the centerpiece and engine of the Walton Arts Center. It is, both our, it is both our pledge and our stated intention to expand and upgrade the jewel that is the Walton Arts Center of Fayetteville. The Walton Arts Center Board passed a resolution reaffirming our commitment to fulfill the plans as outlined by the November 2013 bond issue that was supported by the citizens of Fayetteville. To do so requires our board and staff to conduct a successful campaign, capital campaign, to raise approximately $16.5 million from our private donor base. Our board believes our opportunity for a successful campaign is meaningfully enhanced by your vote in favor of the governance as presented. We believe the government's governance proposal makes provision for the protections and assurances that Fayetteville and the U of A should both, both deserve and should require. Our board members and our major donors want clarity and certainty as to the scope of, of the authority that resides with the Walton Arts Center Board. We want to make decisions knowing that we have the authority to do so. Our board believes the concerns of both our board members and major donors with that regard are appropriately addressed in the governance <coughs> proposal. On a personal note, my wife Hannah and I were both born in Fayetteville and have lived here all of our lives. We were investors in the original Walton Art Center construction project. We are annual supporters of the Walton Art Center. We have contributed already to the Fayetteville expansion plan. My personal pledge to you as a board member and current chairman is to make all best efforts to ensure that this expansion program is carried through as pledged to the city of Fayetteville, carried through to its completion. In addition, should you approve the governance, I assure you that I will do my very best to effect an appropriate transition. 
I ask for your vote of yes on the governor's proposal as presented. Thank you very much for your time. Do we have any questions for Mr. Lee? Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. Who would like to address us next? Good evening, Chancellor. Good afternoon. My name is uh, David Gerhardt, and I have the uh, privilege of serving as Chancellor of the University of Arkansas. I want to, first of all, thank uh, this group for the wonderful partnership that we have enjoyed working with the City Council, the City of Fayetteville, uh, alongside the Walton Art Center. Uh, it's now 25 years that we've had this incredible partnership. The partnership has existed with very little strife. Uh, it has been, I think, one of the greatest things that has ever happened for the city of Fayetteville and certainly has benefited the university. And uh, I want to compliment this group and uh, your predecessors for making the Walton Art Center a showplace for our community. <clears throat> I um, must say to you that I believe strongly in um, Northwest Arkansas. I'm a believer that we all have to work together, all of our communities, but I want you to know that my first and foremost allegiance and first and foremost concern is for the city of Fayetteville, for the citizens of Fayetteville, and of course for the University of Arkansas that I have the uh, fortune and privilege to uh, head up. I believe very strongly that these new governance documents that uh, we have all looked at, that we've all discussed, that we're all familiar with will help uh, to continue that great partnership between the city and the University of Arkansas. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy on what happens perhaps in other cities, uh, what happens in other cities in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, there's not a whole lot any of us can do about that. Um, personally, I, uh, I uh, am very supportive of what happens uh, all through Northwest Arkansas. The AMP, the potential building, another uh, venue, perhaps in Bentonville. I think all of those are good things. But my first concern has to be about this city and the University of Arkansas. So I want to say to you that I believe firmly that enacting this new governance structure is going to benefit the city of Fayetteville and is going to benefit the University of Arkansas. I believe very strongly that we have to look out after ourselves. Nobody else is going to do that. The City of Fayetteville and the University of Arkansas are the two entities that have to do everything we can to make certain that the Walton Art Center can, remains viable and continues to be an important entity in our city and on Dixon Street. We believe that in order to do that, to ensure that we're going to have a viable venue, we need to enact uh, these uh, new governance documents. I bring you greetings from the University of Arkansas Board of Trustees. We met, uh, the board met last month. They approved unanimously the new documents. And uh, I bring to you their greetings and their hope that you also will approve unanimously these new documents. I believe the partnership that we have shared uh, over the last 25 years is a very important one. And I hope that we will continue to share that partnership in the future. Let me finally say to you, as a citizen of Fayetteville, as somebody who uh, grew up here, uh, as somebody who was born here, I grew up about five blocks from here, the, uh, the uh, chance to come back and serve the university and serve the city and the people of Arkansas has been a great thing for me. And I want to say to you, I pledge that the University of Arkansas is going to do everything we can to remain the venue where the arts uh, happen. I believe with the facilities that we have at the University of Arkansas, we're building, as you know, a new facility. Uh, that's going to be finished in about a year. Construction is already underway. It's going to be a smaller venue that will seat about 600 people. It's going to be a great venue for smaller concerts. We're also building, as you know, a new basketball practice facility. Once that is finished, we'll be able to use uh, Bud Walton Arena for very large concerts. And uh, we could also have a concert uh, that uh, seats as many as uh, 70,000 people if we decided to use uh, uh, the uh, stadium. We are committed to using our facilities for the benefit of the citizens of this community. And I believe that the combination of our facilities, the combination of what we have here in Fayetteville, and the partnership we have in the city, this 
community, this city will remain the venue of choice for the arts. We have become a Steinway campus, as you know. We put a lot of money into that. That's very important to our students and to the community. And we're going to continue to do a lot of other things that will enhance the arts. So I ask you, uh, on behalf of our Board of Trustees, on behalf of our faculty and students, to support this and to pass it. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor, I hope you'll pass it unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Who else would like to address us on this? Good evening. My name is Mary Ann Greenwood. Uh, I'm chairman of Greenwood Gerhard, a supporter of the Walton Arts Center, a member of the Walton Arts Center Foundation Board, and I'm joined tonight by my husband, Reed Greenwood, a retired faculty member and former dean of the College of Education and Health Professions at the University of Arkansas, and my business partner, Brock Gerhardt. He's president of Greenwood Gerhardt, treasurer of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce, board of directors. He's a member of the Corporate Leadership Council at the Walton Arts Center. And we would all like to ask uh, each of you to support and approve the governance pr uh, proposals as presented. We all also thank you for you taking your time to serve as a member of our council. You are very important to Fayetteville and to Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Reed and I came to Fayetteville in 1957, 1958, before most of you were born. But just for a point of reference, that's the year that Frank Brawls came as the head football coach. And we can remember when Jug Wheelers, the Deluxe, Georges, and Woodruff Laundry were the highlights of Dixon Street. Times have changed. Reed and I have been involved with the Walton Art Center since the beginning. Uh, as with Greg Lee, we are donors, patrons, and we have made contribution to the capital campaign. But we remember when Joe Fred Starr and David McClinton and some other friends got bulldozers to knock down a building on Dixon Street so we could have the groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, the fact that the building had asbestos, I think they asked for forgiveness, not permission. But Mrs. Helen Walton was happy to be there and announced her family's support, which I think continues for the Walton Arts Center in Fayetteville and throughout the region. <clears throat> when Bill Mitchell worked 80 plus hours a week to get the project off the ground, and he is back helping the Walton Arts Center with the capital campaign for the Dixon Street property that we are talking about. Reed served three terms on the council, two years as chair. In Greenwood Gerhardt, our company has sponsored events at the Walton Arts Center since the beginning. The most recent being Corrado Rivera, the maestro for the Artisphere Festival Orchestra which also has, by the way, had a wonderful um, event at Crystal Bridges. We are a regional facility. It's been our home for almost 60 years and we're committed to the WAC. The leadership at the Walton Art Center completed an extensive and exhaustive process to develop and secure approval for the new governance structure that will enable continued expansion and development of programming that will enhance the quality of life in Fayetteville and Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, I've had the privilege of serving on the Northwest Arkansas Council. And after the hyper growth years of the 1990s, we had a strategic planning session and quality of life was one of the four areas that we determined we had to make a commitment to for the future of Northwest Arkansas and growth. I served on the Arkansas Economic Development Commission and I had an opportunity to go uh, to communities all over the state and those that were growing were those that were part of a regional leadership. They asked what they could do, what can we do 
They didn't ask, what can somebody do for us? And I served on the Little Rock branch of the Federal Reserve Board, and we had meetings every month to talk about the economic conditions around the state, Northwest Arkansas, Fayetteville, and Northwest Arkansas. Always had positive reports on jobs, on retail sales, on growth. Um, we're fortunate where we are. We're fortunate to have, you know, an opportunity to make choices. We always sort of joked at the Federal Reserve that the, the streets in Northwest Arkansas were paved with gold because compared to the rest of the state, they really are. We're a region of 500,000 people, Fortune 500 companies, and we have a commit entertainment choices that enhance our quality of life. I can name them. In Fayetteville, we certainly have the Walton Arts Center, Razorback Athletics, Symphony of Northwest Arkansas, Theater Squared. We participate. In Springdale, Rodeo of the Ozarks, Arvest Ballpark in the Naturals, Art Center for the Ozarks, in Rogers, the Rogers Little Theater, and the Arkansas Music Pavilion. Now you know that Ms. John L. Hunt gave the land for that and loaned the money. She also, through company J.B. Hunt, you know, they provide the yellow limousines that bring the little children to the Walton Art Center for programs every day. This is important. It's a regional effort. Also, Bentonville, of course, uh, Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Gee, how great that is. We also benefit from that. The Amazium, the Walton Five and Dime. We are a regional community where I-49 goes north as well as south. And we are part of that. We, united we grow, divided we will stagnate. The, provo the proposed governance changes, the new 25-year lease, the new parking deck, were developed and reviewed by attorneys representing the City of Fayetteville, the University of Arkansas, the Walton Family Foundation, and the Walton Arts Center Council. Wow. You want to tell me where you get four legal groups together and they all agree. This is a major deal. Uh, it's been approved by Mayor Lionel Jordan, the Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas, our Chancellor, Dave Gerhardt, Don Bobbitt, President of the University of Arkansas, the Walton Family Foundation. And you know, folks, they fund an awful lot in Northwest Arkansas and in Fayetteville. They're good to us. The Walton Art Center and the Walton Art Center Foundation have also approved this. The board of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce has approved this. And Dixon Street Merchants Association have also given their support. With the overwhelming support of the Fayetteville business community, the University of Arkansas education community, the arts community, and the regional community, Reed, Brock, and I ask for you, our representatives, to be the difference makers and support the proposal as presented. Let's move Fayetteville forward. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Mayor Jordan, members of the City Council, uh, my name is Woody Bassett and I have no title. Um, I guess my title would be just a citizen of Fayetteville, but like Dave Gearhart, my good friend Dave Gearhart, who we grew up together, started in kindergarten, went all the way through school together. I love this place, just like I know all of you do. And I guess one thing that I wanted to say tonight, uh, I do have a little bit in common with all of you because along with Alderman uh, former Alderman Williams, City Attorney Williams. I had the privilege and the good fortune to serve two terms on this city council back in the 1990s. So I've sat where all of you are sitting tonight, 
and I understand your responsibilities and I understand what it's like to be an alderman in Fayetteville, understand what a privilege it is, and so thank you for your service. You know, there are some who occasionally like to poke a little fun at us here in Fayetteville for the way that we go about our business, for the way that we like to debate and discuss, the way we like to address issues. I love the way we do it. I love the way that all of you have done your job on this issue. You have handled addressing this governance issue in the way that I would expect you to handle it as a citizen of Fayetteville. The way I would expect you to handle it as a former member of this council who sat right where all of you are sitting. It's an important issue. But all of you have asked good questions. All of you have listened to your constituents. You have listened to citizens who care about this issue, who want you to know what you think about this issue. You have done all of the things, at least in my opinion, that I believe elected officials such as yourselves should do. I commend Mayor Jordan. I commend Kit, City Attorney Kit Williams, for all the time and effort that you put in working with other parties to bring this proposal to this council. And I commend all of you on this council for the time and effort that you've put into this leading up to tonight. When I served as an alderman, uh, I always ended up, at the, when all was said and done, trying to vote in a manner in which I believe to be in the best interests of this city that we love and in the best interests of the people that you represent and that I represented back in the 1990s. And I can't help but believe that if you approve the governance proposal as is, the proposal that is before you, that that will be in the best interests of Fayetteville and it will be in the best interests of the people who live here. It will go a long way in helping the Walton Art Center be all that it can be and be the best that it can be. Now, we don't always get it right in Fayetteville. I think we get it right most of the time, but we don't get it right all the time. But we always get it right when it matters. We always get it right when it counts. And tonight is one of those nights, and this is one of those issues, when it matters and when it counts. It matters that we get this right. The right thing to do for this region is to approve this governance proposal. The right thing to do is to approve this new governance structure for the Walton Art Center. It's the right thing to do for the Walton Art Center. It's the right thing to do for the enhancement of the arts, not only in Fayetteville, but throughout this region. It's the right thing to do for the Dixon Street Entertainment District and for our business owners down there, several who's sitting right here, Mel and Joe and so many others. It's the right thing to do for our businesses. Most of all, though, and this is what I know matters to all of you, and it should. Most of all, most of all, the right thing to do for Fayetteville, the right thing to do for the people who live here, the right thing to do for the people who love and care about the arts, the right thing to do for our future is to approve this governance proposal tonight. To do so, at least in my judgment, will lift all of us up in Northwest Arkansas. It will lift up this city. It will lift up the Walton Arts Center. I would echo what uh, Chancellor Gearhart said. Uh, you should vote your conscience, and I know, know that you will. I got outvoted seven to one a number of times. But vote your conscience. And Justin, I appreciate what you've done. I appreciate the way that you have thought this through. 
I appreciate the way that you have expressed your opinions, and I respect them. I respect them a lot. So whether or not it's a unanimous vote, well, we'll see. But I hope that it is. To do so, I think, would be a very fine example of leadership on your part, leadership for the citizens of Fayetteville. So let me just end by saying, once again, thank you for your service. I know how much time it takes to be an alderman, but it's a real privilege. And I thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Wood. Who else would like to address us? Him? Mayor. I'm Bill Bradley, and I'm here in my capacity as chair of the Federal Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Uh, as you know, we formally endorsed uh, the governance changes in a, a letter dated June 13th, 2014, uh, addressed to the mayor and copied to the council. What's important, I think, is why were we comfortable and eager to do that? There's four, four real reasons why we felt strongly about that. Our view that being part of a regional Northwest Arkansas arts revival and expansion serves Fedville well. Our view that the vetting and due diligence process in reviewing the changes in governance have been thorough, deliberate, including in, and done by a diverse, capable group our view that ample provisions are included in the changes to protect the roles of Fedville and the University of Arkansas going forward, as well as ensuring an active arts experience on Dixon Street for the long term. Showing appropriate gratitude to the Walton family for all they have done for us historically and have committed to do in the future, some of which we probably don't even know about. Again, we believe the time to move forward with these changes is now. Doing so ensures Fedville as a vital part of the Northwest Arkansas arts scene. Moving forward now also allows us to more appropriately focus on other things, like taking the chancellor up on some of the uh, prospects of having concerts uh, at the university and taking our partnership with the university to a whole new level. Good source of uh, sales tax revenue, Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Bill. Who else would like to address us? Joe? How are you? Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Joe Fennell. Your support of the Walton Arts Center governor's proposal is very important to the vitality of Dixon Street and the city of Fayetteville. As president of the Dixon Street Merchants Association, I ask that you support the changes to the governor's proposal that is before you. The Dixon Street Merchants Association believe that the Walton Arts Center's board's overwhelming approval of the revolution, uh, resolutions that states, money will not be raised for new performance facilities within or outside of Fayetteville without having first funded and completed the construction of the Fayetteville expansion speaks highly of their commitment to the Fayetteville Walton Arts Center project. As a business operator and, <coughs> and owner on Dixon Street since 1980, I personally ask for your support of the governor's proposal. Having the Walton Arts Center as my neighbor for the past 22 years, having witnessed Dixon Street before the Walton Arts Center was built, I can honestly tell you that Fayetteville is a better grander city because of those who had the vision and raised the money to build the Walton Art Center on Dixon Street. The Walton Art Center is Dixon Street. Dixon Street is Fayetteville. We all live here in Fayetteville. It is our duty to take care of what is ours. The Walton Art Center in Fayetteville is ours. Thanks to all of you for your service, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Thank you, Joe. Who else would like to address us?
Good evening, Mayor Jordan and City Council. Um, I didn't come here this evening to speak, but I'm just an ordinary person. Um, I have not particularly strong ties to anything but the community of Fayetteville. Could we get you to introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. Um, my name is Leah Bergman Lanier. I know so many of you, I forgot. <laughs> um, but I would second all of the comments that have been made here this evening and would love to see you be faithful to your commitment as city councilmen and women to the city of Fayetteville. Um, the Walton Art Center is one of the things that's first and foremost in everything that we introduce when we come to bring international students to the University of Arkansas. And I think that it's always quite amazing to them not only to see uh, the campus and the community, but the commitment of the community to the arts, to the library, to all the things that require us as a community to support. And without the support of the city council, those things wouldn't happen. I moved to Fayetteville just about the time that the Walton Art Center was built. And it was amazing to me that I could go to the theater and see things that I never went to in Los Angeles where I had it right at the end of my fingers because of the crowds and the traffic and everything else. And here in this amazing corner of the planet, we can see amazing art. Now we have crystal bridges. Along with all of this, I think that Fayetteville's commitment to the arts has been exceptional, and I hope that that will continue this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to address us tonight? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council. Council, we're on the second reading. What's the wishes of the council? Yes. I have a couple of comments. Sure. <clears throat> and if, if I need to make them later, just stop me and restart me. Um, first of all, I want to thank the people that have spoken tonight. Your words are extremely important, and I just wanted to recognize that. Um, what I asked for when I proposed my amendment at the last meeting was more assurance that what the voters of Fayetteville voted yes for last November would be exactly what they received. I believe that the 3,640 people that voted yes last November deserve this assurance so that in the future Dixon Street renovation of the Walton Art Center could not be changed. And I believe that placing restrictions or triggers as, as some people have called them on when the governance of the Walton Art Center change would go into effect would guarantee this for the citizens. And I'm proud that we did this. I'm proud that we did it because I think this has made our community stronger. It has made the renovation project stronger. Um, it's brought all of you here, which is wonderful. I was pleased last week when I saw the, the Walton Art Center Council pass their resolution. And I'll tell you why, because what I saw there was citizens, like we've seen tonight, many of whom are from Fayetteville, many from the board of the WAC itself. And I think these people want what is in the best interest of the city, and tonight we've seen them step up and give their word. This is very important to me, because depending on one or two people who say, trust me or trust us, was not sufficient to me. And I didn't think it was sufficient to the <coughs> people of Fayetteville. However, when I see these people tonight, and uh, the last person who stepped up said she was just an ordinary person. I, I think she's way above ordinary. Um, but when I see her and I see names like Gerhardt and Bassett and Lee, um, and when I take calls and emails over these last couple of weeks from some of the most prominent citizens we have, it's clear to me that these people truly have given their word. When I hear Greg Lee say he will make a personal assurance that matters a great deal to me. Because as the newspaper said today, Mr. Lee and people like him have put their integrity on the line. And that's a really, really important step for our city. 
These are some of our finest citizens, many of whom from the WAC board that voted for this resolution. And there were a couple of didn't on, who didn't vote for this uh, resolution on the WAC board. But I would argue that those two, Billy Waite and Steve Clark, are two of our finest citizens. And that they voted for what they thought was best for this city, and that's all we can ever ask for from them or anybody on that council. I want to thank the WAC Council for making this assurance. I want to thank them for giving us their personal assurances and giving their word that this project will happen as the voters were told it would. This is truly assurance to the people by the people. And it's good enough for me, and I think it's good enough for our citizens. And so at the proper time, if that's now, uh, I, I actually want to retract my amendment that I introduced at the last meeting. And you can do that. It will require also the agreement of the second to, uh, to remove. I would agree to remove my second. Okay, then it is, uh, it is no longer on the table, so we are back to the original uh, ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is on the second reading. Adele. I would like to say that I um, think that Justin has spoken it very, very well. And I agree completely. I appreciate so much um, each of you for coming and for contacting us this week, as you have done, to express how important you feel this is. I have read every one of those letters very carefully and have talked to several of you. And that has um, convinced me that we do have the assurances that we need for the people of Arkansas, for the people of Fayetteville, well, for all of Arkansas, especially Northwest Arkansas, the region. But I, I appreciate so much your willingness to step up and provide for us that, uh, that assurance, and as you have done through the weeks and uh, this evening. I also think that it will pay off in um, devotion and allegiance to the Walton Art Center because I think that um, constituents who have expressed some concerns to me will be assured and, and that is, um, makes us all winners because I think that we will now see the Walton Art Center on Dixon Street flourish and grow as uh, we all want it to and can enjoy it, as well as all of Dixon Street. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Mark. Um, the Walton Arts Center is in Ward 2, and so I think whenever I look at the ward that I represent, we know the importance of the Walton Arts Center, and we know the importance of the Entertainment District, and we know the identity that we have associated with the Walton Arts Center being in Fayetteville, being on Dixon Street. And what I've seen over the past two weeks is the engaged community discussion that Fayetteville is so uh, famous for. Uh, and that, I think, is what was missing before uh, we delayed this by two weeks, before we had further discussion. And like other aldermen here, we have certainly had more input from a broader community than we had two weeks ago. And with the broad support that I've seen, the public assurances with individuals that I believe have great integrity, um, the resolution that is also public and published I feel confident that I can support this also as, and move forward. Indeed, what I would like to do this evening is go ahead and suspend the rules and move to the third and final reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to go to the third and final reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adams? Yes. Long? No. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Shot Marsh? Yes. An ordinance to approve the Fifth Amendment to the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Art Center Foundation Incorporated, the Sixth Amendment of the Articles of Incorporation of the Walton Art Center Council Incorporated, and their amended bylaws, and the amended and restated interlocal cooperation agreement between the University of Arkansas and the City of Fayetteville. 
Okay, what final comments do we have from the council? Sarah. Um, I wanted, just wanted to say that I really appreciated the resolutions that were passed by the Walton Arts Center Board, um, and I feel really good about this governance change. The reality is that Northwest Arkansas is no longer just Fayetteville, and it's counterproductive of us to potentially limit the growth of the Walton Arts Center based on irrational fears, especially when the board has made it abundantly clear that Fayetteville, the Fayetteville campus, will continue to be the home campus and the first priority of the Walton Arts Center. I'm really glad to see the growth and development of other cult cultural destinations within driving distance of our city, and I want the City Council to support this regional economic development. The proposed agreement strikes a good balance between protecting Fayetteville's interests while enabling the Walton Arts Center to diversify its offerings through our metro region. It maintains the box office and associated sales tax revenue in our city. It keeps their administrative jobs in our downtown. It guarantees high quality programming. It supports the growth and improvement of our art center, which is a vital piece of our entertainment district, all while maintaining a strong voice for our citizens and our university on the board. I think that the proposed agreement strikes a very fair balance for all stakeholders involved, and I will be voting in support. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Who else? Anything? Yes, Al. I, I do have a question. I, I wasn't really prepared to vote on this tonight. I was hoping we'd hold it for another two weeks, but how, how does the administration, I know that you were involved in the negotiations for a very Yes, long Alan, I was. How do you feel about, or I guess I don't know who all I would ask this question to, but since this is really a move to move this to a regional board, um, and they're going to be building a facility in another community also, this agreement lacks one thing to me, and it's that they don't have representations from those communities in which they'll be building other facilities. So if this is truly a regional move, then why wouldn't other facilities share the same representation, I guess? Well, that, if you want, I mean, uh, I can tell you that was actually discussed, and it was decided that the Walton Family Foundation being able to appoint nine members uh, of this uh, Walton Arts Center Council Board would be in the better, best position at this point in time to protect any interest for the Benton County uh, entities. Uh, and we also looked at the fact that who has actually been the financial and organizational supports of the Walton Arts Center? It has been the university, it has been the city, and it has been the Walton Family Foundation. And so we really felt that those were the three major players and therefore, there are the players that should, in fact, uh, be the ones to appoint the board uh, of the Walton Arts Center Council. And I think there's no real problem. Uh, I've not heard any problems from the city of Bentonville or the city of Rogers uh, about concerns about that. They realize that the board members appointed by the Walton Family Foundation will certainly uh, protect them. And I think the most important thing for those cities was the fact that we agreed to change the purposes of the Arkles Incorporation, which had focused only on the Dixon Street facility to expand into the Bentonville facility, the Rogers Amp, and in fact, through and, and the university facilities. And, and once the Walton Arts Center was completed, the enhancement project completed, basically within the discretion of the Walton Arts Center Council to anywhere within Northwest Arkansas that they felt was appropriate for a performing arts or, or other arts facility. So, we did discuss that. That was something that, that we broached, and it wasn't that the city of Fayetteville was opposed to that, but we all felt, all the entities felt like this was the best solution, and, and I still think it is the best solution, and uh, so that's why it was agreed to by everybody, all the entities, and that's what's before you tonight. My involvement in this started about 2009 when I came into office. And we met with business leaders on Dixon Street. We met with the Walton Arts Center. Joe, you remember one of those meetings where one of the things that y'all were concerned about is parking deck down in the downtown area. We went to work on that. We were talking about an expansion of the Walton Arts Center, and we went to work on that. And it has been uh, how many years? Five now that we've been working on this. We've probably been working on it 20 years before that, but time gets away from us, doesn't it? Um, in dog years, it would be a long time, <laughs> but we have uh, 
for about the last year and a half, myself, Kit, Don's been working on it, have been working on coming up with these governance changes. We work with, the, of course, the Walton Arts Center. Thank you, Greg, for your help on this, and Peter Lane, thank you. Um, we worked with the University of Arkansas Chancellor, I want to thank you. Scott, thank you. Um, I certainly want to thank uh, the Walton Family Foundation. I met with them. And I was concerned about keeping our votes, and they graciously let us have those votes in the university to keep theirs and reduce the number of appointees from the region to nine. They said they would certainly uh, keep the programming the same, and uh, but they wanted they they wanted this. The thing you have to see is this is no longer just federal; it's a region. You know, there's one thing I know about government. There's two types of government you can have. You can have a consumer-based government that says, what's in it for me? What do I get out of it? What I believe we have in this city and what we have in this region is a partnership-based government that says we're all in this together. How do we move it forward together to a new level? So I came back, and Kit and I, and I want to thank the attorneys that all worked on this. Scott, Jeff, um, uh, Kit, um, Marshall, that uh, y'all did a great job. I know it took a long time, and I know that was some laborious work. <laughs> I saw the red lines in those documents going back and forth. Um, but we came to a solution that I thought we could all live with that would advance this city, not only this city, but a region. I believe that's what we have. And you know, more importantly than anything that's written, everybody gave me their word and I gave them mine. And I believe that's stronger than any contract you can ever draw up. Because if your word's no good, you're no good. And I believe these people's word's good and I believe they're good people and their best intentions, not only this city, but the region. And this is what we have before you. And I think it's time for us to move and to act and to move this city and this region to a new level. Thank you. What else? Anything else? Okay. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adams? Yes. Long? No. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Shopmark? Yes. Thank you very much. It passed. Thank you all. Okay. Now we move on to the next item. Number two, the Walton Arts Center Incorporated Lease. A resolution to approve an amended and restated lease agreement among the University of Arkansas and the City of Fayetteville as landlords and the Walton Arts Center Council Incorporated as tenant. Thank you all. Mr. Mayor, uh, we, uh, this basically was discussed along with the, uh, the governor's changes. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I think the uh, audience was addressing the lease as well as the governor's mm -hmm. changes uh, when they were speaking, but I'm ready to answer any questions if you have any on the lease. Any questions from the council? All right. Any public comment on the lease? Seeing now, I'll bring it back to the council. Mark. Again, I think we've addressed this with the previous discussion, and I would like to go to the suspend the rules and go to the third and well, final. This is a resolution. Oh, it's a resolution. Good. Sorry about that. Pass. Second. I'm sorry, Mark. That's okay. I just I mean, you're making it. a motion to pass, correct? Yes. And Adele, you're second. Yes. All right. All right. Mayor, can I just say one thing? Yes, ma'am. I'd just like, like to publicly say that um, I know kind of back on the other issue, but Justin, thank you for your leadership on this. I think one of the things that this did for me, and I, I just think it's worth saying a few names, it gave me a chance to have a couple of weeks to visit with Don Marr and get some perspective on the city's hard work on this. It gave me a chance to talk with Steve Clark and talk personally about his thoughts and opinions on this. I was so glad for that time. I really appreciate the people who took the time to explain something that I think might have been a little confusing to some of the citizens, some of the citizens that I talked to. So I think once we've hashed it out and talked about it and read it, it makes a lot more sense. And thanks to
to you all for the resolutions too from last Tuesday night. I was so glad to hear that too. So I just think it's worth saying thank you for the great way in which people have answered my questions and helped me to understand this better. And thank you, Justin, for your leadership on that. Thank you, Ryan. I know that's not exactly to the least point, but I didn't want to. Any other comments on the lease? Thank you. thank you. I too want to thank uh, Councilmember Tennant. I think uh, it doesn't hurt to question things. It doesn't. We should all be so diligent to make sure that things don't get rubber stamped. I appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. I just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about the Porter Produce Building because that was something that was an issue for the Fayetteville Forward Economic Accountability Council group. Um, the, the Porter Produce Building occupies the corner of Spring and West Street and is within the Walton Art Center campus. And it's a 1904 to 1908 structure with deep ties to the agricultural history of our region. And right now it is being used as a boarded up storage facility for the Walton Art Center. And um, as we're looking at revitalizing our downtown through the Main Street program, one of the things that we need to remember is that every corner on downtown, or in our downtown matters, every building matters. So we really wanted to see something more done with this space besides it just being a boarded up abandoned building uh, on an important downtown corridor. Um, so during the last uh, meeting of the Economic Accountability Council, we had passed a resolution asking for um, some protections for this building that basically would prevent it from being torn down or significantly altered without the express consent of the City Council, a binding agreement from the Walton Art Center to prevent further degradation to the building until such time as a further use for the building or the site could be determined, and a good faith commitment from the Walton Art Center to work with the community to develop and execute a plan to activate the corner of Weston Spring in such a way that contributes to the vitality of the streetscape and results in a higher and better utilization of the Porter Produce Building than its current status. Um, and I want to thank the Walton Art Center Council for their recent resolution that they passed. Um, I feel like it addresses all of these concerns, um, almost above and beyond, and I really appreciate uh, that effort, and I look forward to working together to find a, a, an appropriate use to activate this important corner of our downtown. So thank you for that effort. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Taking public comment, correct? Yes, you should. Okay. All right. You, I mean, you can take, uh, we haven't actually taken public comment. Well, does anyone like to address the issue of the lease? Okay, I'll bring it back to the council. Any final comments from the council? All right. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Teddy? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Shotmark? Yes. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right. Moving along to new business. Number... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. All right. Number one, RZN 14-4687, 659 North Genevieve Avenue, Davis. An ordinance rezoning the property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4687 for approximately 1.62 acres, located at 659 North Genevieve Avenue from RA Residential Agricultural to RSF2 Residential Single Family, two units per acre. Kit. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, Section 1. At the City Council, the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, hereby changes the zone classification of the following described property from RA Residential Agricultural to RSF2 Residential Single Family, two units per acre, as shown on exhibits A and B attached here to and made a part hereof, and Section 2. At the City Council, the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, hereby amends the official zoning map of the City of Fayetteville to reflect the zoning change provided in Section 1. Okay. Chairman. This is a property located at the southwest corner of Tackett Drive and Genevieve Avenue, uh, west of 54th Avenue in uh, West Fayetteville. Tackett Drive is a, a relatively long dead-end uh, street, relatively narrow also. Um, it's about 1.5 acres and developed currently with a, a duplex, a two-family residence constructed in 1976. The properties uh, immediately adjacent to this property range in size from about 0.6 acres to 2.5 acres. The property is located in an area that's characterized by large lot uh, rural residences. There is a small subdivision to the east uh, that's about uh, quarter acre lots, but that development pattern is the exception in this area. Um, this 
the original recommendation to the Planning Commission, a request of the Planning Commission was to rezone this property to RSF4, four units per acre. Uh, that, that was on April 28th. The Planning Commission um, decided to table that item, allowing the applicant to look at a different zoning district. Staff was not recommending in favor of RSF4, finding it was uh, too dense essentially for this area given uh, the low amount of infrastructure, there's a two inch water line that serves 10 to 12 residences in this area. And there are some photographs um, beginning on page 16 showing you the road conditions in, um, in this area. Um, the applicant brought back a request to rezone to RSF2, which was approved by the Planning Commission on a 6 to 3 vote. Um, with this particular application, however, the applicant's requesting of the council to also consider the RSF4 again. Um, they would like to build two additional single family residences. Uh, you can see on the um, uh, potential lot split plat on page 18, generally what they would like to do essentially, it's an existing duplex that would, they would carve out uh, about a half acre lot and then another lot to the south of that. Um, staff does not support the RSF4 designation. We also do not support the RSF2 designation. Uh, we believe that um, this being a rural residential area on our future land use plan, um, that is the predominant use within this area. There is a very low amount of infrastructure and we feel like um, adding um, additional lots within this area uh, would not be um, in the best interest of the city. Um, as I mentioned, the Planning Commission did vote 6 to 3, which is why your recommendation um, shows that it is in the, as the ordinance uh, to rezone to RSF2. Okay. What questions do we have for Jeremy on this? And Matt. Um, Jeremy, what is this in relation to Ruffle Road and the box around the city? Is it inside or outside of that box? It's quite a ways outside. Um, 54th Avenue, I don't know the exact um, uh, distance, but if you look on page 22 of 22, um, you can see the, um, it's actually Rupal is off the map. Um, before this is 46th and then Broyles Avenue. So this is west of the sewer treatment uh, plant, um, west of 54th Avenue as well. Thank you. It's quite a ways out there. <laughs> yes. Matthew. I'm sorry, you may have said, but how many homes are out on this road now? There are uh, roughly 10 to 12 <coughs> served off of Tackett. Um, there's paved. It is paved. Uh, there are photographs on page 16. You can see we drove out there and took some, some photographs. And it's a public <coughs> road, right? We're responsible for maintenance of the infrastructure out there? That is correct. There's some, um, some private roads uh, within the area that we do not maintain. A lot of times they're utilized as public because there's no gates on them. The low water bridge crossing, for instance, that's private um, that accesses Michael Cole Drive and up to Weddington. Um, but this is a, a public uh, drive um, off of 54th Avenue. Okay. That's it for now. Thank you. Any other questions? I would like, would the applicant like to address the council? Okay. I don't know if the applicant's here. Is the applicant here? No. Yes. Please come up and address the council. My name is Gary Davis. I made the application for rezoning of the property. 59 Genevieve. Do you have any comments you'd like to make to the council or? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit of hard hearing. Is there any statement you'd like to make to the council? As no, as I'm proposing to build two single family residential housing units there. Uh, probably be 1,600 feet each and be a uh, craftsman style construction. Okay. All right. Any questions for Mr. Davis on this? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other public comment on this? See, I'm bring it back to the council. I have a question for Jeremy. Sure. Jeremy, when we're looking at the, uh, the infrastructure for water delivery, could you again remind us what we're looking at over here? Because I think that this is a major concern are a concern whenever we're looking at expanding the overall utilization of this property at a higher density. One of the things that was identified, I think primarily, was the existing water line with um, just additional single family units. You don't, you don't see infrastructure improvements, so you don't see right. um, water line improvements generally uh, if there's already access and the capacity for, um, for uh, domestic services there. Um, so if there's only a two-inch water line here, that essentially means that there's no fire protection um, for this. That's what I was so kind of getting at. Some sort of pump truck uh, or some, something of that nature, I would assume. Um, the two-inch uh, water line serves around 10 to 12 houses within that area. Um, this is an area that's, that was annexed like this, and so it's been like this since the 70s or before. Um, and so that it simply hasn't had the development um, 
development pressure to improve any of the infrastructure in this area? Well, it's a two-inch water line, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct, all the way from 54th Avenue down Tackett Drive. I believe that's correct. And if you can imagine a two-inch water line serving this uh, whole residential area, we're already at a capacity where there is a concern. And what I would like, what I, I would hope to see is when someone develops this, that they would offer in some way to uh, improve the infrastructure so that we could also have confidence that there would be fire protection in this area. It's at the very edge of Fayetteville. Again, we have not had water improvements. We haven't considered any water improvements through the Water and Sewer Committee in this area. And the, I mean, we certainly have on 54th already, we have the capacity if we can go west, it's just I don't know who's gonna pay for it or where it's gonna come from. And we have Persimmon. Again, we've already had our improvements there. But at this time, I, I really would, I would love, I would love to support the vision of the landowner as a property right to develop it. But in reality, as a responsible um, advancement to the West, I feel like that there is some uh, concern that overrides that uh, vision because of fire protection and overall water pressure on a two-inch line going all the way from 54th Avenue to the end of Tackett Drive. And so I hope that the City Council will consider this when we move forward. If indeed we decide to uh, um, uh, you know, up the density here, then it's possible that we're going to have further density development along the uh, adjacent streets all the way through Michael Cole Drive out to Brook uh, Drive. The, the, if indeed the, the city council sees this as a vision and that we need to uh, have more density here in the uh, westernmost uh, area of Fayetteville, then I think we also have to consider how to improve the infrastructure. And at this time, through the Water and Sewer Committee, we haven't even discussed it. I think that's a great point. So I, I apologize that it hasn't been discussed, but this, uh, this is a concern until we have a budget that can support infrastructure and offer safety. We recently uh, had the opportunity to have a, uh, an improved fire district rating, and it's because we have the capacity to get water where it's needed to protect our community from one end to the other. And I think that this is not uh, in line with what we're, we're expecting here in the city of Fayetteville. And it's with regret that I can't support it because I do like property rights and I do like the opportunity for an individual with a vision to uh, build on their property, but this property is, does not have the infrastructure right now to support higher density. Well, and you know, I would like to clarify, there's a subdivision east of this property. It would be a very lengthy extension, but it's, I think it's called Sundance Meadows. It was approved in the early 2000s. Um, you can see it there on your aerial photograph. That likely has fire protection, but it's still quite a ways, and I don't know if they would have access or the means to provide an extension for even two single-family homes um, for an additional, generally what we require is an eight-inch water line. But they passed R2, right? The Planning, Planning Commission, Commission did. Planning what Commission was the recommendation to staff on that? We were recommending that it remain in the current designation of RA, which is consistent with mm -hmm. um, properties surrounding it. Ms. Davis, normally we, once we close the public comment, but unless the council member brings you back, but I will bring you back and let you address that if you would like. There was a double wide mobile home at the rear of that property, which has been moved. So the water lines are there. There was no increase in the size of the water lines. Okay. Jeremy, can you? It's likely, it's likely simply accessed off that existing two-inch yeah. water line that provides the service to these properties. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Alan. I, I, Ms. Alderman Kenny and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because I, I went out about two months ago and I walked this entire area um, of Tackett Drive all the way back to the loop that 
is shown on page 19 of 22. And the streets and infrastructure do seem too narrow to me to increase the density there, as well as the concerns you mentioned about the water. So I don't, I don't believe that I can support this either. Okay. Rhonda. Can I ask a question? When, sure. So we have a we have a fire department memo in our packet. So they reviewed it. I know the chief is here. I don't want to put him on the spot, but you can put him on the spot. So it looks like the memo in our packets is only addressing really response time, Chief, and then and saying that Engine 7, located 835 roof, will, will support it. I asked a question last, one of our last rezoning out, because it was going, it was going pretty far out towards Farmington the other way. I don't know how much pressure we're putting on, you know, this part of engine, this, this, this station, and I wonder why, I wonder if, um, our review could include, you all aren't looking at the size of the, of the pipes, you're looking at response time mainly when you... We look at response time, we also look at water supply, we go and test, uh, check the hydrants oh, you, okay. all over the city, and so that's, when we pre-plan an area, we take those things into consideration. This is the western edge of town, we have automatic aid agreements with all of our surrounding partners and on the very edges of town, the surrounding fire departments, which do have mm -hmm. tankers, will respond automatically with the resources that we uh, set up with them to locations on the outskirts of the city. So, so, so we would have... The department, for example, would likely respond here in addition to the yes, city? Yes, I think okay, that... And that's what I, I like supporting, I mean, I have so much confidence in our in that review sheet in our packets that I never really questioned. If you say it's good, then I, I just totally, you know, depend on your professional opinion there. And so, though I think we need to be looking at this, and I appreciate your leadership in our water and sewer, your, I value your your memo in here and, and, just, and always believe you've been out, you know what you're saying when you say it, it's okay with our fire department, so. Yes, we review them. And we have plans for the edges of the city. Even the, the ones that are annexed after the fire stations are built, we plan them out. So the jurisdiction, oh. when it's inside the city limits, the city's going to, this engine's going to go out there if there's a fire. But Weddington's Volunteer Fire Department, which is very good too, is going to also respond, you think, in this case? Yes, they're, they are dispatched along with our units in the automatic aid areas. Okay, thank you very much. It helps. Sure. Anything else? Anything else for the Chief? Thank you, Chief. Yes. Alderman um, King, I couldn't appreciate your, your comments more. And I, I want to maybe piggyback on those a little bit and even talk about um, what might happen on a longer horizon. Um, you know, I think if we do the math, and we should do the math, uh, and we look at what it's going to cost to maintain. So I start over. Um, I think we do the math and we look at what it's going to cost to maintain the infrastructure out there, whether that be the roads and the sidewalks, like you mentioned, Alderman Long, or whether that's the water infrastructure. We have to come up with a plan to pay for the maintenance, even if somebody else pays for the installation. You know, oftentimes we think if somebody comes forward with a development proposal, and they're going to pay for the necessary infrastructure on the front end, that's a slam dunk deal for the city. But we almost never, in fact, it's very rare that a city is this progressive. We almost never do the math on what it's going to cost to maintain it. And I would wager, and I think this is a very conservative estimate, that even if we built out that entire neighborhood at eight units an acre, that we would not be getting enough property taxes out there to maintain the infrastructure that it would require. And that's what makes this a planning issue. It's not an issue about one proposal. Um, you know, I believe, I trust the fire department memos too, but they're ad hoc memos about a single proposal. They're not about what it means for us to be consistent if we vote this one proposal in and then subsequently try to be consistent about the proposals that come afterwards. So if we rezone this RSF2 or RSF4, I think that makes us obligated for those that vote yes to do it again the next time the next one comes through and that's what makes it a planning issue. And that's why we go through these 
exercises every five years with our city plans and why we have these future land use maps is because we're trying to figure out where we want the growth to occur. And what we've decided as a city, and I think this is a real important precedent that we should never forget, is that we've decided it's better for our city to grow in a more compact way than the dispersed way we have been growing over the past 20 years. And a lot of it has to do not with philosophy or ideology, like some people might think, but with real hard do the math calculations. Mm -hmm. It just costs more to build 500 feet of road or install 500 feet of sewer pipe for eight homes than it does to do it for 20 homes on a more compact block like we have in our historic neighborhoods or in the center of our city. Or even West of Weddington and some of the neighborhoods that are already out there that have room for infill. The truth is this is a green field area of our town. And frankly, it's practically pristine. It's pristine agricultural space. And I think we can rest, at least I can rest my decision on the do the, on the, do the math argument. But also, I think it's important us, for us to consider the very long-term um, uh, ramifications we have if we let pristine agricultural land go over to development where we may need it to be agriculture in the future. So, you know, I would just encourage us, maybe this is a, a first test um, and that's good, but in every proposal that comes forward, I think we need to do the math on what the maintenance is going to cost, not just the installation. Um, so I hope we all think about that when we vote. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I have several concerns about this. Um, number one is, you know, looking at the map, this property is served by um, several dead-end um, streets. And so there's really kind of only one way in and out of this development. And, you know, as we saw recently up on Rogers Drive, when that road collapsed and those uh, residents were at risk of not being able to be accessed by emergency services. And while this is relatively flat and it's probably not going to collapse, we could have an ice storm, a tree down, and you know we could not get services back to these neighborhoods. So that's very concerning. Um, but additionally, it's located well outside the uh, Rupal Road, which I supported because we were that was sold to me as being part of the box around our city and an urban growth boundary. And so I'm going to want to see a really compelling reason to approve any kind of density um, increases outside of that box. And I just don't see any compelling reasons here. So I cannot support this. I'm going to support staff's decision. Any other comments? Well, this is on the second reading. I think it's the very first reading. Well, I mean, it's on the first reading, but do you all want to advance it to the second reading, or do you want to? I make the motion to spend the rules and go to the second reading. Second. I have a motion to second to go to the second reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tenna? Yes. Shopmar? Yes. And ordinance rezoning that property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4687 for approximately 1.62 acres located at 659 North Genevieve Avenue from RA Residential Agricultural to RSF2 Residential Single Family, two units per acre. Make a motion to go to the third and final reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to go to the third and final reading. So would you please call the roll? Adams? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Shopmar? Yes. An ordinance rezoning that property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4687 for approximately 1.62 acres located at 659 North Genevieve Avenue from RA Residential Agricultural to RSF2 Residential Single Family, two units per acre. Any final comments from the council on this? Okay. Sandra, would you Wait, please? I have a Oh, problem. I'm sorry, Mark. I do think that we, again, as we move forward, we'll look at this area through water, sewer, and with uh, Alderman Petty's insight, because that is exactly what we were, what I was going for. We have to uh, consider how we're going to pay for this in the long run, and we will have to do that when we look at costs associated with the maintenance, and we can do that at water, sewer, solid waste. And I just wanted to say that that would be something in the future that we would look at. Okay. <coughs> Any other comments? All right. 
Sandra, would you please call the room? Adams? No. Long? No. Gray? No. Marsh? No. Kenyon? No. Petty? No. Tennant? No. Schottmeyer? No. Okay. All right. We'll move along to the next item. Number two, RZN 14-4725, 1974 North Gregg Avenue, Gibson. An ordinance rezoning that property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4725 for approximately 0.65 acres located at 1974 North Gregg Avenue from RSF4, residential single family, four units per acre to RMF24, residential multifamily, 24 units per acre. Kit? Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, Section 1, that the City Council of the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas hereby changes the zone classification of the following described property from RSF 4, residential single family, 4 units per acre, to RMF 24, <coughs> residential multifamily, 24 units per acre, as shown on exhibits A and B, attached here to and made a part hereof. Section 2, that the City Council of the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas hereby amends the official zoning map of the City of Fayetteville to reflect the zoning change provided in Section 1. Okay, Chairman. This property is located on the east side of Gregg Avenue between Elm and Miller Street, about 0.6 acres, uh, currently zoned RSF4. The request is to rezone the property to RMF24, which is our multifamily uh, zoning designation, 20, up to 24 units per acre. Um, there are some site impediments for development. There's a large overhead transmission line and a support pole adjacent to the southwest corner of the site. Properties adjacent to this site are multifamily to the north and the south single family to the east and mixed commercial and industrial to the west. Um, on our future land use map, this property is designated the city neighborhood area, which does support more densely developed um, residential and non-residential neighborhoods. Um, it also encourages the widest spectrum of uses and encourages density in all types of housing. Um, staff is supportive of this rezoning. The Planning Commission voted 6 to 0 in favor of it as well. Uh, we do not feel it's well suited for single family development uh, use because of the surrounding land uses and the frontage. Um, that it has currently. So staff is supportive. We feel it uh, does meet things compatible with the neighborhood and consistent with our city's goal for appropriate infill. Is the applicant here say anything? Yes, please. Yes, sir. I'm Malin Gibson. I'm the one that uh, owns the property at the present time. My wife and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. I don't know what a lot, a lot that I can add that wasn't put before the Planning Commission. No. Just give me a chance. Just, uh, I own this about 30 years, and it's just laid there growing grass. And I've been fortunate enough to see, receive some cordial letters a couple of times from the city <laughs> saying I had forgotten to. Yeah, you may have. <laughs> you, you may. You may have. But, but it's uh, it's bordered on both sides by apartment com. It's the only logical use for it. So. Okay. Any yeah. questions? Just Any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right, any public comment on this? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council. Will we suspend the rules and go to the second reading? Second. second. We have a motion and a second to go to the second reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adams? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Schottmeyer? Yes. An ordinance rezoning that property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4725 for approximately two-thirds of an acre, located at 1974 North Gregg Avenue from RSF 4, residential single-family, four units per acre, to RMF 24, residential multifamily, 24 units per acre. Will we suspend the ruling of the third and final reading? We have a motion to second to go to the third and final reading. Sandra, would you please call the row? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Schottmeyer? Yes. An ordinance rezoning that property described in rezoning petition RZN 14-4725 for approximately two-thirds of an acre, located at 1974 North Gregg Avenue from RSF 4, residential single family, four units per acre, to RMF 24, residential multifamily, 24 units per acre. Any final comments from the council on this? Okay. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Schottmeyer? Yes. Okay. Number three, vacation 14-4740, 514 West Martin Luther King Boulevard, Hillback. An ordinance approving vacation 14-4740 submitted by Blue and Associates property located at 514 West 
Martin Luther King Boulevard to vacate an existing utility easement. Kitts. Whereas the City Council has the authority under ACA 14-54-104 to vacate public grounds or portions thereof which are not required for corporate purposes, and whereas the City Council has determined that the following described portion of the platted utility easements are not required for corporate purposes. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council, the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, Section 1, that the City Council, the City of Fayetteville, Arkansas, hereby vacates and abandons the following portions of utility easements described in Exhibit B attached hereto and made a part hereof. And Section 2, that a copy of this ordinance, duly certified by the City Clerk, along with a map attached and labeled Exhibit A, shall be filed in the Office of Recorder of the County and recorded in the deed records of the county. Chairman. This property is three quarters acres in uh, three quarters of an acre in size at 514 West Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. It's currently zoned MST, Main Street Center, directly west, due west of our uh, trail system. It's currently developed uh, or was utilized for a small auto repair shop and storage uh, yard that's no longer in use. There's a planned redevelopment of this property. There are existing utility easements that entirely bisect the site, including right underneath the building. Um, the applicant's requesting vacation of those utility easements as, as included on the attached documents. Um, Planning Commission voted in favor of this um, six to zero. There are no utilities and the building really could not, you could not install utilities because of the location of the building. So we're recommending that these utility easements be vacated. Okay, what well, questions do we have from the council on this, Chairman? Anything? Okay, any public comment on this? Seeing none, bring it back to the council. We suspend the rules and go to the second reading. Second. We have a motion to second to go to the second reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Hetty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Strotmeyer? Yes. An ordinance approving VAC 14 4740, submitted by Blue and Associates, for property located at 514 West Martin Luther King Boulevard to vacate an existing utility easement. Move we suspend the rules to go to the third and final reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to go to the third and final reading. Sandra, would you please call the roll? Adams? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Shotmar? Yes. An ordinance approving VAC 14 4740, submitted by Blue and Associates, for property located at 514 West Martin Luther King Boulevard to vacate an existing utility easement. Any final comments from the council on this? Anybody good? All right. Sondra, would you please call the roll? Adam? Yes. Long? Yes. Gray? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Petty? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Chotmar? Yes. Okay. What announcements do we have? Mayor, we. We have a Ward 1 meeting on um, Thursday night, the 17th, at uh, the Senior Citizen. Um, the Senior Center on South College, 6 o'clock, Ward 1. All right. Chief? <clears throat> Mayor, tomorrow um, at 5 p.m., we will be having the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the yes, completion please. of the Highway 71B Fayetteville flyover, which will be opening new access to Mall Avenue and I-49. Um, citizens can park at the... Um, Parking there between Red Robin Restaurant on Van Ash uh, and Mall Avenue intersections, and we will have uh, the flyover closed for the ribbon cutting ceremony. We hope that you all will attend. Also, Thursday, uh, July the 3rd, is the first Thursday on our historic Fayetteville downtown square, um, as well as uh, in uptown Fayetteville. The Fayetteville Freedom Fireworks will be at the Northwest Arkansas Mall at 7 p.m. You can use the new flyover yes, uh, to access the mall area two ways uh, to get in there for the uh, fireworks area. And also in our region this weekend is, of course, the 70th annual Radio of the Ozarks between July 2nd and July 5th. We also want to remind citizens that our ordinances allow for the shooting of fireworks, non-bottle rockets, starting today between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. through the 4th. Um, no bottle rockets, no. and those are the time periods. If you have any questions on the ordinance, you can find the information online in a city release press release. And the city offices will be closed on Friday, uh, July 4th, for the Independence Day holiday. Okay. Any other announcements? All right. Thank you all very much. We're adjourned.